Where does LeBron James rank? Wow. Well, first of all, it's easily top 10. Easily. Um, but when you talk about, in terms of talent, skill, what he brings to the table, um, you can make a legitimate argument that overall talent, he's number two all time. Wow. Mm. You can literally make a legit. Now, obviously, when you talk about positions, that's a different debate as to who would be your top five players and you go by position, et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at, uh, again, and, and there's two different categories. There's a talent category and there's a title category. Now, when it comes to titles, he doesn't come before Magic, doesn't come before Jordan, doesn't come before Bird, doesn't come before Kareem, doesn't come before Tim Duncan, okay? He doesn't come before those dudes. But if I'm doing my top five, then, and I'm not taking into account titles, just talent. LeBron James is the greatest small forward that has ever played the game of basketball. There is nobody better than LeBron James. He's top five, right? But obviously, when you talk about Clutch Gene, I would put Larry Bird ahead of him because when it's time to close, I'm giving the ball to Bird all day, every day yep. over LeBron James because of Bird's ability to shoot and particularly in the clutch. But when we talk about talent, the ability to play on both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively, you can handle, you can shoot, you can pass, you can drive to the basket, you can defend multiple positions. I mean, outside of Michael Jordan, who else is there to pick? I mean, when you think about LeBron at 6'8", 6'9", 250, and what he can do, he can legitimately play five different positions. And even though Magic, understand the greatness of Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was a guy that was tall enough to play the point guard. He was the orchestrator, the architect of Showtime. Um, he was an elite passer. He can look over defenders, et cetera, et cetera. But the totality of his skills, Magic didn't have what LeBron has. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that. So when I think about skill set, talent-wise, I mean, again, I'm too young. I've only seen black and white tape of Elgin, Baylor, Oscar Robertson, you know, people like yep. that. So I defer to the elder statesmen of the game to tell me about what those dudes brought to the table. But yep. I would imagine that LeBron is a brethren of those dudes mm. and that he just took what they originally pioneered and, 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 and designed and took it to another level the way Connie Hawkins and David Thompson and guys like that took Dr. J and Dr. J preempted MJ and MJ preempted Kobe. But I guess what I'm saying is I just look at it and I think overall talent, I, I, other than Jordan, I, I can't think of anybody. Uh, and I mean, talent-wise, you know, again, I put Jordan the edge because he got the titles, plus he could play on both ends, sure. offensively and defensively. Outside of that, it's LeBron to me. So so you're differentiating your argument between talent and versus titles. resume, right? That's right. Okay. Talent okay. versus titles, yes. Okay, I got it. If, if we're just doing in a vacuum, just pure gifted talent, just, just saw inch for inch talent, okay. I, I got to tell you, seriously, this this will sound blasphemous. I would take LeBron James over Michael Jordan in that area. Wow. Well, well no, just on on gift. Now, I'm the, I'm the biggest Michael Jordan fan on the planet. I'm not going to take him as a basketball player, right. but on just raw talent, 6'9", 260. The, the one big thing that I liked what Michael did, Michael taught himself to shoot the ball a little better than LeBron has been able to teach himself to exactly shoot the ball. Which is exactly why I didn't put LeBron over okay. over. Uh, MJ and the reason why I don't have the reason why I don't have Kobe over LeBron is because to me it's Kobe MJ. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm it's with Kobe you. MJ. And Kobe's if I can't close get, in this uh, argument though. I know that. On just raw, yeah, no, just uh, gift. You no, know. no, no question. Okay. No and question. you know who else is in that? If we're just doing in a vacuum, Kareem Abdul Jabbar at yes. seven. What do we call him? Two seven two. I put the Kareem Abdul Jabbar over Bill Russell. Okay, on, on pure talent yes, or on resume? Because you talent. can't do rings, no, no, obviously, because no. Bill Russell had exactly, 11. 11. Exactly. Okay, now, let's just do straight barbershop argument. Right. Who you taking? If, if I'm going to rank who I'm going to take all time, I'm a little older than you, they stuck in my psyche a little stronger. But I have LeBron, and you, you, you're probably hooting and holler over this, I've got him ranked ninth on my list. I've got him in the top ten. But listen to me, listen to me. i got Michael Jordan at the top because he uh, of performance, of great 
greatness of resume, of not just rings, because obviously he had six, but just pure clutch gene, game closing, I want him on my team, greatness. Well, That's Michael Jordan well, for me. And I've got Kobe over LeBron on resume. Okay, I, I do too. I got Kobe two notches above. So my mine goes in order. I got Bill Russell number two, and I, look, I know it was a different era, but when you win 11 championships, yeah, I, I got to put you up yeah. there. I'm sorry, I know you're only 6'9". <laughs> I mean, LeBron's maybe a little bigger and stronger than Bill Russell was. But 11, I got you up there. Right. My man Magic Johnson is third on my list just because I want him in my foxhole, man. I want him running. If I want somebody with the ball in his hands in tough situations, Magic's my guy. Five championships. I got Shaquille O'Neal at number four. Wow. Listen, for three That's years, good. for three years, Most I have dominant. never seen yes. a, a more powerful offensive force than Shaquille O'Neal. He was literally unstoppable. Now, it wasn't the pretty to watch. It got a little ugly sometimes. <laughs> he just ran over little dudes who tried to guard him, but he was still unstoppable for about that. Remember that 2000 to 2002 stretch in there? So to me, it I, was longer than that, but go ahead. Yeah, well, but, but that's when I just, he would just ragdoll my spurs, Duncan and, and David Robinson. He just tossed them around like they were little kids. And, and again, I'm putting him one notch above Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who has six rings, but that's a close one. I would just, if, if I had to draft somebody for my all-time team, I would have taken Shaq a little bit over Kareem, mm. just just on on overall toughness and physicality and dominance. K Kareem was a little more finesse to me, but he was some finesse. I mean, that skyhook was literally unstoppable. Now, that, now I've gone five deep. I'm putting Tim Duncan at number six just because he doesn't get the credit he deserves with five rings because there's nothing spectacular about him. He is not box office. He is not Mark key there's no personality to him but do i want him to, to build around my basketball team yes i do i'm i'm going to take him my all-time draft at number six because yeah. all he's going to do is win you a whole bunch of championships yeah. i'm sorry number seven is kobe eight and, and i've dropped him down my list because he only has three i got larry bird one notch ahead of lebron just on clutch gene of what you just spoke of and i got lebron ninth now lebron is in danger of falling to two and four in the nba finals maybe he'll pull it off and if he does <coughs> this would be his greatest obviously his greatest achievement ever he would get high marks from everybody, including me, if he pulls this one off without Kyrie and Kevin Love. And if he does, he might start climbing up this list a little bit. But right now, I think it's fair. And we have seen this man now for 12 years. LeBron James has played 12 full seasons. So I've seen enough that for me to put him at ninth in my top ten is still on my list, by my standards, that's pretty high. He's, he's, he's risen pretty high on my list. Well, let me say this to you. <clears throat> I have no problem with your top nine, none whatsoever. I would put Kareem above Russell because even though there's 11 titles, could, I'm, th I'm, thinking yeah, who, I'm thinking about who. I'm thinking about who close. you played with, yep. who you played with, the level of parity or absence thereof that existed in the NBA at that particular time. I mean, I mean that, Kareem did get to play with Magic and Worthy. Well, well I'm, yeah. I'm also combining that with the fact that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to this very day, before him, since uh, while he was playing and after Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has the one and only unstoppable move in the history of the game, it the Scott Hook. Yeah. Magic, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, it doesn't matter. The turnaround, baseline, day, whatever you want to pick, there is only one unstoppable move in the history of basketball, and it is owned by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You knew he was going to shoot the Scott Hook all the time, and it was absolutely positively nothing that you could do about it. Period. So to me, when you combine that with the fact that it has six rings attached to it, mm -hmm. some of them when Bird was playing, when Isaiah was playing, mm -hmm. when Dr. J was playing, six. even when Magic, well, even when Jordan ultimately came mm -hmm. along, Isaiah and the Bad Boy Pistons were in existence. No matter, you still had the one as he aged and the fast break Showtime would run up the court, and then on the occasion that they were stopped, they'd simply wait about ten seconds for. Kareem to come lollygagging down the court, <laughs> and then they throw it to him on the on on, on you know on the on the on the right block, mm -hmm. and one fake hair, sky hook, money. <laughs> that I, I mean, it didn't matter whether he was 20 years old or mm -hmm. 40; it still withstood mm -hmm. the test of time. That is why I put him up there. When I think about Kobe, let me tell you why I would put Kobe against Tim Duncan above Tim Duncan. 
Tim Duncan is a champion, and he's great, and he's the greatest power forward ever. Number two would be Kevin McHale, by the way, not Carl Malone, okay? But here's the flip side. For his entire career, Tim Duncan had Greg Popovich. Mm. He had David Robinson initially, and then after that he had Manu Ginobili, and he had Tony Parker, mm. and all of this other stuff for his entire career. Kobe Bryant had Shaq the first go round. The second go round, it was him and Pau Gasol and an injured Andrew Bynum. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's still five rings, and so when I look at Kobe and seven trips to the finals, seven. All right. So when I look at it from that perspective, I say to myself, well, you know what? I can't deny that. So because the road traveled was tougher over the course of his career, Tim Duncan arrived in San Antonio. The day he walked onto the NBA court, he had David Robinson waiting to play with him. Mm -hmm. The day he arrived, he had David Robinson playing with him. Briefly, had, yeah. No, what I mean by it is this. No friction, no mm -hmm. animosity, right. no turmoil, no soap opera atmosphere. The star departed. Ultimately, you've got to rebuild. You're the pariah. You're the guy seen as pushing Shaq out of town. And you all have the Eagle County, Colorado thing going on. One piece of adversity after another. Another for Kobe Bryant, literally close to zero for Tim Duncan throughout his career. So I give points for that, for overcoming those odds and, stacked against you. That's me, all I mean. For his entire career, Greg Popovich had Tim Duncan. That's how I look at it the other way okay. around. I'm sorry. Tim Duncan was, ha, has been special. He had a special year well, this well, year. Well, well, at 39, he was really but, good. But, but to me, this year makes my point. Because the point is this. If other dudes had come to play with Tim Duncan, they very well may be in the finals right now. We understand that. Mm -hmm. And nobody is questioning in any way the greatness of Tim Duncan. I'm just saying there's a lot to be said for being in a stable environment. LeBron sure. left Cleveland because of the instability that existed here. Kobe almost left L.A. because of it. Michael Jordan retired because of it. So when you look at, the, when you look at it from the standpoint that no matter where you turn, instability somehow, okay, some way, rises us ahead. Friction or no, so Kobe that. benefited from Shaquille O'Neal. I don't the care the what first, you say. The first yeah. three, what yeah. I'm saying, the first three rings, the most dominant force yeah. in the game, no question. But I'm saying to you, he validated himself because what you got to remember Kobe wanted Shaquille he wanted to separate from Shaquille O'Neal for exactly the statement you just made mm -hmm. he knew that for the rest of his career he would be attached at the hip of he Shaquille O'Neal and his his individual greatness would be questioned if he stuck with Shaquille he wanted to venture out on his own to validate his greatness do you know what it says for somebody to yeah. sit there and have that as their quest and then to turn around and pull it off he did it he, he did it, it. Yep. he did it he's not we now talk about Kobe separate and apart from Shaq, not just with Shaq. He deserves credit for that. All right, can you guys help me out? What do you guys call Deli? What do you call him? <laughs> Deli, Tr Deli, Deli Trey. Trey. All right, when we come back, we're talking about Deli Trey. Tim Legler had some interesting comments on yeah! Deli Trey. Back in a moment. First Take is presented by Chase, celebrating small business. Learn more at missionmainstreetgrants.com. And in part by M&M's. Movies are better with M. There's Golden State. There's Golden State and Cavs fans. You guys are bold right here. Yeah, these guys I get you guys. You really do. Keep it friendly. Keep it friendly. We understand. These guys but need to be careful. They, they yeah. just need to be careful. Cautious. Be, be proceed, kind to proceed them. Proceed cautiously. Yeah. Um, as I was saying, you know, we love when people watch the show and send us some tweets. You guys know about Little B, right? You know the curse that Little B put on Kevin Durant mm. and James Harden, mm. which you think is kind of funny. Mm. He he also said, though, he said specifically that LeBron James, there was no curse. So mm. he's all straight, right? Everybody's good with LeBron. He just tweeted the show. He just wanted us to know that he really liked the Iman Shumpert video, and he wanted to see what you guys thought about it. Mm. What do you think? I, I just hope Little B doesn't put a curse on Delhi. Uh-oh. Right? W what if he did? Yeah. He's not cooking yet? No. no. Oh, that gonna happen? Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Game Three. Stephen A's like I'm not a part of this. Uh, who, who who wins the game tonight, my friend? I'm picking Cleveland. I'm picking Cleveland. <laughs>
really, I really, I really believe that 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 game three is pivotal in this series. I think that you know LeBron imploring the crowd in Cleveland to show up to be raucous and noisy. I think that there's a need for that. He knows that his troops are going to need all the support that they can get because Golden State's going to be ready tonight. And I think that Cleveland's going to have to find a way. To win, keep in mind, Golden State is still the best team in this series. Cleveland just has the best player in the world. They will find a way to escape with tonight's game. And Iman mm. Shepard's got to show up offensively, too. Mm. Okay. I believe, in fact, I, I know that Golden State's going to win one of these two games in Cleveland. And I believe it will be tonight because I believe... He owes his team a game, and I think he will give his team back a game tonight. I got 100 to 98 visiting teams. Let tonight. me tell you what we owe you guys here in Cleveland. Another show. We'll be here at 3.30 this afternoon. Please join us, will you? We're going to be on ESPN. Let's get Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. I'm Carrie Champion. Thank you for watching again. 3.30 Eastern over on ESPN. We'll give you another show.